Behind every spectacular home design is vision, imagination, and attention to detail. What becomes the final product is a result of months of planning and hard work. Space by space, we're going to show you exactly how that happens. I'm Becky. And I'm Brett. We're siblings who build custom homes together and have a lot of fun doing it. Sometimes too much fun. Come along for the journey from rendering to reality. Come on, Brett, let's go. I'm super excited to show you three of our favorite primary suites. The luxury suite at Beachfront, the elegant bed and bath at Villa Bonita, and the serene escape at Family Ties. I think it's super important to be prepared and to basically have an idea. I tell a lot of clients, let's make sure we have the whole uh, design concept of your home before we start so that you're prepared and we can give it to the builder and then he can go just execute everything. We try to have that all at the very beginning so that everything's dialed, where things go, what, what goes where, and so that the builder and then all the contractors can just execute the design. I think as far as getting started, the more you are prepared up front, like getting in sync with the designer, the architect, creating that team early on is critical mm -hmm. to the execution of the... And to making the, things run really smooth. I think it's important to get that team established so things run really smooth in the whole process. It just makes the job easier yep. for everyone along the line. Yep. You know, subcontractors, suppliers, you know, myself, the designer at the end, you can all see it if you prepare up front. Yeah. And, it, and it takes a little effort. You know, you have to go out on the site and create your view corridors, make sure that the architect nails the views of what you're, you know, what you're trying to Brett's accomplish. Brett's really good at that. He'll walk the lot multiple times, make sure this is where the view windows are. I just think it's important that the inside flows to the outside and you've got that, you know, where you, we, we call it blur the lines from in to out. So you, you basically have your eye drawn to the outside space and then to the views and to the vistas and everything you're trying to accomplish. You've got to nail that early on or, you know, it just won't yeah. be as it's You'll great. regret it. You'll regret it in the end, not not doing that, being prepared in the beginning and going walking through those initial steps to make sure it's just how you want it. Today we're talking about primary bedrooms and bathrooms. For me, it's a little bit of a struggle that working with clients on that because usually the husband has an idea and the wife has an idea or partners can't agree on certain things, but you know, in the end, <laughs> we make it happen. We make it happen. It's I, a very important part of your home, I, I think. Uh, I mean, I honestly think the primary bedroom is probably the one of the most important. More than the if kitchen? Not, More well, than the I kitchen? Mean, yeah. I don't know. I mean, the kitchen's important, but I know. think about it's true. You come home from work, it's been a long day. That's where you go yeah. to kind of relax, relax and, you want it serene and, and, you know, and to talk and to communicate mm -hmm. with your, you know, with your spouse. And primary bedroom and primary bath become a critical spot, you know? Yeah. You know how I feel about the primary bed and bath. I mean, I love... Your rela relaxation it's, station. It, it is. It's the relaxation station. Yeah. I mean, you get home from a long day, yeah. and that's where you go to just kind of veg out, yeah. to chill, to relax. And, you know, whether it's just in the bedroom or, you know, the bathroom, like, I think there's so many things you can do to a bathroom space that's your primary yeah. to make it special. I mean, and if you have the budget and you want to do a killer shower and a, make it a steam shower yeah. and you want to do the heated floors, if you have budget, that's a great place for it. Yeah. I mean, that's a great yeah. spot to put yeah. a little extra. A little extra something. When it comes to the primary bed and bath, it all starts with the design. So when starting to design a primary suite, I usually start with the bathroom. And I, the ones we've done recently, we've tried to make really serene and pretty. And I typically start with the, the floor because sometimes I'll try to put a pattern on the floor and then from there I'll build up. So in Family Ties, we used a lot of mixed metals. We used gold, we used polished chrome, and you're gonna see that later on how we incorporated all these mixed metals. Um, like I said, I start with the flooring and then we build up from there. The backsplash is really neutral, it's really serene and calming, and then I love to put some lighting over a tub, especially if it's a floating tub. I mean, a freestanding tub is so pretty on its own, but when you add some sort of chandelier over the tub, it just adds a whole nother level. It's that jewelry that you add to the bathroom that completes the whole space. So here what I picked out today is just kind of a pattern tile, and then I, I 
put it together with just some warm compliments. Um, I know that in the primary bedroom, we're gonna have wood, and so it's gonna butt right up next to each other, and I wanna make sure that they work well together, so I lay it all out. When I'm looking for a patterned floor in the bathroom, it's usually something that's serene and not too overwhelming. You, you definitely wanna walk in there and feel like almost a spa-like feeling. You don't want anything blaring or really abrasive, and this is just, for me, this is just calming and inviting, and I know Family Ties is a pattern floor as well, and it's just calming, and it just feels like, oh, I'm on vacation in my bathroom, and it just feels really nice. I typically love to do wood in a primary bedroom with a really nice plush rug, so that when you get out of bed, it's soft on your feet. Primary bedroom and bath are super important just because you spend a lot of time there as well, and that's where you kind of go to retreat and hang out for the night and maybe relax after a long day of work. Keep it serene, keep it neutral, just nothing super blaring, because when you come home at night, you're just gonna wanna somewhere to retreat off to that's quiet and comfortable and inviting. Design is great, but I think the next phase, executing the construction, is even more important. Now we're on the active job site looking at the primary bed bath. You can see again a lot of constructions going on. You'll hear it in the background. You'll see, you know, we're, we're pre-drywall stage. We just finished the insulation and now we're, we're rolling forward on the drywall and the finishes. Um, it's a little messy, you can see. Watch your step as you're going around, but uh, we're trying to, to get this house done and show what we, we can do. As you look around this, the primary bedroom, I love the feel, I love the natural light. We've got great windows in the back. They're gonna look onto a pool and a little outdoor sitting area. I, it's gonna be an awesome feel. As you transition into the bathroom, again, if you look at Becky's design in this space, it totally shows what it's gonna look like. Right now, you can't really see, but other than you see the construction. But we're gonna have a killer tub right here and then this transition tile that goes from the tub to the shower, a glass wall. So if you look at the rendering that Becky's drawn, you'll see everything finished. Right now it's just at the rough stage, but the renderings show the cabinets looking great, the mirrors, the pendants coming down, the finishes on the wall, the tile on the back of the shower and the tub, and then you roll into the, to the primary closet. We've got a washer dryer set up and the shelving, the toilet room. It just kind of all lays out perfectly. Again, for not a very big space, it's utilized very well. You know, this, this house, the pad of this house is honestly, it's like 45 feet wide, 100 feet long, and we are putting five bedroom, five and a half bath, and this primary room becomes a sanctuary for the owners. And we love how it's turning out. We love how Becky's drawn it up. And now we're just trying to put it all together in construction. So the design of this primary suite is truly unique. You know, it actually has an entry of it in and of itself. You've got these arches that come and you, you walk through one, the door's gonna be right here, an arch door, and then you walk in and you have this private little courtyard for an indoor-outdoor feel, private here, and then another archway, and bam, you're right here in the primary suite with its own custom fireplace wall and then check this out. This is gonna be so cool. This door opens all the way up so the corner of the room goes from this corner back and this corner back so the whole corner of this room opens wide open to the outside. You know, whether you wanna sleep in the elements or just open the doors, the weather's so great right now, it'd be a perfect time for this opening. Just love the views. Check out these views. These views are unbelievable. But you look out and you see everything, you know, you transition. This is when I say blur the lines from inside to outside. That's what I'm talking about. You, you create this space where it's easy to feel like you're inside or outside. We're gonna carry the floor all the way through and, and it'll just feel like the outside space is so comfortable in living. So as you enter the primary bath from the bedroom, this entrance also makes quite a statement. You've got an arched opening with a pocket door that feels like you can close it off or leave it open. And you, you walk in through this entry 
and then all of a sudden, here you go again, this huge, massive window that just draws your eye to the views outside. It feels like you're floating above the lower level, but it's so much natural light, and we're gonna put a tub, freestanding tub, right in the middle of that view, so it'll just be so nice and comfortable. Another thing to consider when you're orienting your houses, you wanna make sure, if, if at all possible, to face some of these view windows to the north where you don't get a lot of direct sunlight. So here we have this beautiful view window facing north and you're not gonna get a lot of direct sunlight right into it. And so I, I love the look and I love the feel and when we get this all set, it's, gonna, it's just gonna be a great piece. You know, they've got everything. They've got heated floor, yeah. they've got a steam shower, yeah. they've got a washer dryer in the, in the primary closet, yeah. they've got, you know, heating and details. cooling elements. There's just yeah. so much going on. I actually love that primary bath. The floor to ceiling glass mm -hmm. behind the tub mm -hmm. that looks out to the view. That's yeah. gonna be the view is so insane. Great. Yeah. That's another one that, I mean, the site visit, the lot yeah. layout and the preparation well, to get that important. exactly yeah. where we wanted so that you have that floor to ceiling glass yeah. looking at the right spot and over the view to the Red Mountain. It's gonna be, I mean, it's, the reveal is gonna be off awesome. the hook. <laughs> <laughs> so again, Becky's done an incredible job with her renderings on this primary bath setup. The vanities show these custom mirrors and medicine cabinets that will recess into the wall. And then the shower is so nice. I mean, this is a shower anybody would want. You've got a custom steam unit. We've got rain heads. We've got handhelds. We've got body sprayers. Anything you want. It's such a spa feel. You walk through the shower into the the closet and the toilet room. We've got a washer dryer. We've got skylights. It's just, this is one of my favorite primary suites. It's got everything you can imagine. There's nothing better than seeing your client come into their primary suite where you know they're going to spend a lot of time in and they're super happy. I love the reveal. Well, we're now we're at Beachfront, and we, you've designed a bathroom. I've tried to build it. We're gonna go check it out. Let's go see if it's truly what you designed. It was a lot of work, but I think we got there. Let's go see. Here we are in the primary bedroom and bathroom. Um, super bright, tons of windows, lets in a lot of light. We used wood tones, we used a lot of texture, linen. Um, we tried to just make it really feel beachy and inviting for any guests that come to stay here. The goal in a, in a primary bedroom and bathroom is to make it a serene, livable area where you can come to a retreat and just, Hang you know, out. just relax. The primary suite in Beachfront is one of my all-time favorites. Yeah. I think I just love that house just because it's... The view, you love the it's view. It's so yeah. unique to what yeah. we've done. Yeah. When you're looking out the On bedroom, that, yeah. across the pool, and across the sandy beach, and into the lagoon, it's just, I mean, it's just unique, and so I love it. It has that yeah. California vibe, that beachfront vibe, and it just, the windows again, floor to ceiling, but they also they open. open and it just, it feels like you're in a resort, which you are, yeah. but yeah. it just has that. But you're in the resort, resort that feels beachy in the middle of a desert, but that you it's wouldn't true. know. It's so true. I feel like that, that in its, of itself is I think like, that's why I'm so passionate about yeah. that, because it's just unique. Yeah. You know, whether it's a, a great room or a primary bedroom, you know, just drawing those lines from indoor to outdoor, you know, creating that indoor-outdoor space is such an important element when you've got a view and something, you know, great to look at outside. And so, yes, yeah, this, this opens all the way up. Yeah. We also have the hidden blind pocket up here so that there's all that protection when, you know, you're in your room. You can just push a button and it will come down. And yeah, I think this, this door window is, is actually 12 feet wide, nine feet tall. And it opens all the way and up. And nine of the 12 feet open, wide open to the outside, so you can transition easily indoor to outdoor in the shoulder season. It's so awesome to yeah. open that space. We had this light. That was one of our sore subjects between us because this light originally was supposed to be, he had it centered in the room and it hit the bed. So that was something that we had to... You know, typically when you, when you d design and when you build a room, you've got the lights kind of centered and, and they work you know, off of the square of the bedroom, and then in the middle of that is either a fan or a light fixture. Not a fan. 
No, 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 no. Not a fan. <laughs> so we put this where you normally put it. I know. Everything was great until she came yep. and said, no, that's not going to work. Well, yeah, we had a four poster bed. How are we supposed to hang a light? <laughs> anyway, so we put it where she wanted it. I think it turned out good. adjustment. It definitely it, it adds ended, to the yeah. space. Yeah. And it makes this feel just cozy and nice as you come in. You're it right. It really completed the space. You're right. Also the rug, I love rugs. I don't know, we haven't really touched on rugs that much, but they really elevate a space. I feel like they bring color, especially when everything's pretty neutral, and they bring texture. In a bedroom, you do carpet, Oh, but... <laughs> I would never do carpet. Sorry, unfortunately, those of you that love carpet, I'm not a fan. I'd rather have hardwoods and clean and then add rugs and change them out as, as needed, but... Well, and I especially like, like... He loves carpet. This is, this is a big problem that we have. It's not we have a carpet his whole house. It's Floor to ceiling, what, carpet, whatever. everywhere. I'm not whatever. kidding, walls. I like cozy, I like soft. But I know. anyway, you can do the same thing with nice rugs. So in the bathroom right behind us, we did just really neutral. We used a lot of grays. What's interesting about this space is we used a remnant for the countertops. And I don't know if you know what a remnant is, but it's just, a piece in the slab yard that no one wants, basically. It's like a leftover that was off a job, and we went and searched, and Brad actually found this, this slab. And it was perfect for the space. It added so much movement and texture to the room. You'll see we thickened the face, which adds a little more of a, yeah. you know, a, a custom element to a countertop. But another really cool thing that I love about this bathroom is the long natural light, the window above. It's, it's up high, so you don't compromise privacy. Brings in natural light, light mm -hmm. across the vanity, across the shower. One element we added also in there is we mixed metals. So there's gold and polished chrome. And I think it just adds an element of almost surprise, but also just feels like it's layered and it's curated and not just everything's matchy matchy. That's one of my pet peeves, I guess, is everything is the same. So I definitely try to mix it up and choose different metals so it just feels more curated. Yeah, you nailed it. Great natural light both in the bedroom and in the bathroom. Mm -hmm. And I think this one was a winner. It was a hit. Let's Good go job. check out the next one. So here we are in Villa Bonita. We're in the primary bedroom. And what we did here is just, it's a pretty neutral palette, white walls, but we, add, we did add some color in the bedding. Um, I love to layer bedding, so we layered it with blacks and whites and grays, and then also a little pop of color with the rust. Rust is kind of hot right now, so it's a fun color to just add in, and then you can take it out for seasons or whatever you want to do, so that you want to jump on in bed. <laughs> <laughs> it did come together. I mean, when you sent me the palette, it's like, okay, I got white walls, I got the same color base, I got the same color doors, and everything seems white, and you think like, is this gonna work? But then when you bring everything together, it, it, it worked again. It's layers. It's all about the layers. The other layer that I'm obsessed with is obviously lighting. I love lighting. We did our own lighting line with Hudson Valley, and this is not my lighting line, but this is one from Hudson Valley that I just fell in love with, and I felt like we had to do it. It kind of makes the room romantic and a little bit glamorous, but yet it's toned down with just kind of our linens and more neutral bedding, and I think it worked really well together. The other thing I love about this bedroom is the, the pop that the windows give. They're black, they're like a matte black, and they kind of play well off the white walls. Yeah, so I think you nailed it on the bedroom, but <laughs> Thank you. the bathroom also turned out good. I think you did a good job I think on the bathroom that. Did, yeah. I mean, it actually, it does look good. Yeah, let's give go you check it out. There. Like the Villa Bonita bathroom, I feel like we kind of, we really wanted to feel um, a little spa-like. I guess, yeah. and have a little bit of the marble elements. We used some marble al alternatives mm -hmm. that I feel like really came across well in there. We also used some warm woods, and I, I love the lighting in there. Yeah. I love the lighting in the, the primary bath. I love the lighting in the primary bedroom as well. Those are two of my favorite things about that home. You wanted to do tile floor to ceiling? Yeah. I would have wrapped that whole wall. bathroom in tile. I know. But we did it, we just had to go with a little more A little more cost-effective tile. tile. Yeah. But yeah. we were able to do it on that whole wall yeah. and it, it turned out good. I think when you have good lighting or there's a few things you can spend the money on, like we spend a lot more on that chandelier over the tub just because that really is when you walk in, that's the first thing you see and it makes the space, I think. Yeah. 
sconces between the mirrors, and um, again, I mix metals in there with the lighting and the faucets. The jewelry. You the love jewelry. The jewelry. The jewelry in there. So the whole back wall is tile. All the and way that, behind the tub. And that kept, I mean, with the tile we chose, it kept it in budget. Yeah. And we were able to do the look you wanted, but maybe keep it, you know, a little more budget friendly. Yeah. So we saved a little money by doing a look-alike marble on the floor, but then along the back, the shower and the shower pan and the shower walls, we did actual real marble, which I think turned out beautifully because that's the first thing you see when you walk in is the marble back. You know, another thing I think you do really well is, is doing the open shower concept yeah. where you have glass walls or maybe pony walls that are halfway up with glass above yeah. it. And it just allows you to see the beauty of the shower. I think it also opens up the space. Like I feel like it makes the space look big. It makes you, it makes it just inviting. It doesn't feel cramped because it's all drywall. Um, I feel like it opened up the space a lot. So Villa Bonita was such a fun project to work on. It's kind of a mix of different styles and I think it all came together nicely and I just love how it turned out. Yeah, you did a great job on this house. Thank you. Thanks so much. I appreciate it. I mean, the it. cabinets, the light fixtures, the tiles. Yeah, I think it turned out. Everything turned out great. Yeah. You know, on this one, let's go check out another one. Let's do it. So here we are, family ties, the reveal portion of the primary bedroom and bath. I love how this space turned out. It's probably, well, it's the relaxation station. <laughs> I love <laughs> the primary bed. I love the primary bath. It's. You know, it's a great design and I think you nailed this one. Yeah, I think we really tried to make this a serene space. I mean, that was kind of the goal for the client is just, they want to come home here and relax and just feel like it's not cluttered or intense, intense colors or anything. So everything's pretty neutral. You know, we add some blacks and tans and colors, but for the most part, it's pretty neutral. There are a lot of textures in here as well. I know on the fireplace, we went with the same stone that we used outside which was kind of fun to do, just bring some of the outside in. So this is a 42 inch wide firebox. It's more of a traditional square mm -hmm. fireplace. You know, the hole overall is about five feet wide. And again, the TV above with a little mantle. Yeah. And again, not too high, but just kind of that, yeah. you know, you roll the stone back to make it look like a solid piece. I think it, it turned out nice with your design. Yeah, I think I love that fireplace. I feel like the texture of the stone with the, all the white paint, I think makes it stand out a little bit, but not too overwhelming. The bed we chose was this nice black. I mean, it definitely stands out in the room because everything else is so muted, but I feel like we needed something to give it a little pop and a little texture. On the back, there's some cane detail that I think gives it texture and just really invites you into this space. I like the seating area in front. Yeah. yeah. Place to sit down, relax. I love sure. that. I also love yeah. the ceiling detail. You know, one of those things where you've got these big windows yeah. in the back that bring in the natural light, but you want to cover them for privacy at night. So integrated into the ceiling, you've got the blind pockets that are hidden, so the shades come down. You don't know they're there unless they're down. I think the rug, too, also grounds the space. I feel like it kind of just has a little bit of um, movement in the rug, but not too much to overwhelm any part of the room. You know, we've done a few of these barn door options for doors mm -hmm. when you feel like you don't want to swing a door into a room, yeah. a pocket door doesn't really work, mm -hmm. and so you've got a nice barn door with hardware, yeah. and that's what we did in this application. Yeah. I think it's a nice element that leads yeah. you into that bathroom. I love that you, we use the black hardware on the barn door. I feel like it coincides with the black windows, and I think it came together super good. Perfect, I think it's great, and it also, I love the introduction into the bathroom space. Yeah. That is a killer space. Good job there. Let's go check that out. Over the years as I've built homes, I know that the primary bath has got to be one of the most important spaces in the home. And I think as you design primary baths, it, it becomes one of the first things you consider as, as an important item. Yeah, we do talk a lot about it as, you know, whoever is using it, it's definitely a little bit of ebb and flow, trying to figure out what the, the uses are and what people are gonna need it for. And this one turned out awesome. It's kind of an extension of the bedroom where it's really serene, feels spa-like, feels just inviting and relaxing, really. We chose a, just a pattern floor. That was probably the most uh, pattern we have in the whole space. So that... You mean the most difficult to install? Yeah, that's true. That was what, that was what the tile guy said. I know, I know. I mean, because you designed this large format yeah. tile. I mean, it's not large, but it's too big to slope. I think it was slope. eight by eight. I think it was an eight by eight tile. And you have to have smaller tiles. Just to slope to a code. drain. Yeah, no transition. We wanted the tile to yeah. run right into the shower. Problem he, so solved So he's able it. to cut this large tile yeah. into you know, quarters, yep. 
and then just butt it together and, yeah. and the, and the seams tell. were tight yeah. and it it actually worked but it just took a little extra effort yeah. um, and a little so you, problem solving and teamwork and all those things <laughs> a little that, push <laughs> like we can do it but yeah. it, no it did it, it worked actually out. worked out good and I think I think we got there no it's awesome and there's radiant flooring underneath it so when you you walk on it it's so warm on your feet and it just actually feels really soft even I think that's one element tile. we've done a lot lately is that radiant floor yeah. the tub too that you turn around and you see this tub and the huge ivy light going over it um, the pendant hanging down that's clear but it just makes a statement even though it's clear I think the primary bed and bath are one of the most important spots of the house. I think it becomes a critical spot to design well, to build well, to execute well, and wrap it up right there. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.